Today we're going to talk about centralized management and remote management. Which one is more efficient? So in Beijing Film Academy, I was doing my graduation film. And at that time, I didn't know how to operate the camera, at least not confident enough to do a whole short film. A lot of the times I saw some of my creative shots are able to be executed in a very simple, for example, DIY or low budget way. But unfortunately in China, a lot of the times those students are taught in very strict different departments. So we have, for example, director's department, cinematography department, art department, and so on. So when they want to do certain creative process, they always take the most expensive industry standard way to do it. And often it's not really suitable, for, especially if you use it on like a simple short film. They don't know how to really help directors. And it was at that time when I learned I have to also learn how to operate the camera myself because not always you need it like this. Basically one is everyone is set in a position and then the command comes from outside and gets pushed into the middle and being executed. It's basically like sending out an astronaut into space and all the commands happen from Earth remotely. The other one is a command starting from the middle and then spreading out to all the people who need to execute it. In this case, it's like directing and operating the camera yourself. Or better said, in the medieval times when there is a general and taking his whole army and going into the battle. Number one, if you use centralized management method, as a director, you can be straight right into the action. You can very quickly do some fine tuning with, for example, adjustments with actors. You can also see what obstacles they have, which limits they have in their movement space. So then you can adjust accordingly very quickly and not waste time. Number two, if you're confident enough to operate the camera yourself, it's way easier to get the shots you want. A lot of the times when you use a professional DOP, they are often kind of locked in the standard workflow process. So for example, we wait for the slate, we hear the command, we get everyone ready, and then we press record. But often you see there are some moments you just want to catch. So in that case, it's way easier as a director just to push the press record button and get it. Number three, you can get way better pacing and framing if you direct and operate the camera yourself. Reason being, usually as a cinematographer, yes, you do know like the blocking, where the actors are going to precisely be and roughly the pacing. But as a director, you often know even further like the whole goal concept and how you feel with these characters. So if those beautiful accidents happen where the actor decides to improv a little bit and is slightly off the original dedicated position, then you're way easier to be able to adjust to it and quickly catch it before you miss that moment. Number four, you can get faster communication with it. Because if you as a director and also operate the camera and are very close to the actors, you can directly talk to them and do some very quick fine adjustments adjust also accordingly to them if it's easier but if you have a DOP in between with a camera operator then it takes multiple steps to communicate in between especially because you're sitting far out so this is also one of the reasons why I love to shoot and direct myself five don't always be perfectionist so often when as a DOP, which I totally understand, you want to get the best image out of it. You perfect everything, you get the right lighting to get the shot you want. But if you think from the director's perspective, you do want a lot of footage, especially if you're thinking about cool transition moments or some insert shots in between. For those, often we don't need the best lighting, we don't need the best perfect calibrated position. So it's like if you're a director and you know, ah, that's just a quick thing I need to get, then I would just pick up the camera and catch it. But of course, re-communicating with the director of photography for certain shots is important because this makes sure you have a double check and a better quality for the end result. That's why I also prefer to do it like this with bigger projects. So yeah, generally speaking, it's very efficient and precise. And beside that, you have a very great overview control over your project. But of course, if you do this, there are some requirements to it. So for example, one being you do need someone who is backing you up. So on the video village side, there is a client. You need to somehow also communicate with them. So it's good if you have a producer who understands you very well and can also maintain a good communication between the client and you while you do your creative process. Beside that, you need to also be confident and good enough when operating the camera, of course. And at the end of the day, that's also why Michael Bay and Zack Snyder have their very specific distinguished style on their projects. And yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below.